This man passed through security with a bag of guns, but the security guards pretended not to have seen the weapon. The man was then arrested again, the plane having stopped carrying passengers. The plane's passengers almost escaped disaster, but Sam, a VIP member, saw everything and continued to persuade the stewardess to let the man go. The man managed to board the same flight as Sam, however. Sam had put the planes to hundred passengers at risk of being robbed. Before the hijackers could take action, a little girl spotted the danger. She was looking for toilet paper in the plane's lavatory when she saw the danger. The teacher saw the little girl return to her seat, nervous, and asked her about it. The girl says she found a bullet in the toilet. That's a red flag. A bullet means someone is carrying a handgun on the plane. The teacher told the girl to wait and report the situation to the captain. But the professor went in the opposite direction, towards a mysterious man. The one of our lot left around in a toilet, and some girl found it. We bring it forward. Turned out that the girl's teacher was one of the hijackers. They had planned to do this three hours after the plane took off, but they had to go ahead now. The teacher returned to the cabin and put on a green hat to alert her companions. When they saw it, they would take action in five minutes. So the teacher came to the girl and told her that he had questioned the crew. He said the bullet had fallen from the air marshal and told the girls not to worry or say anything. He calmed the girls down for five minutes as soon as the time was up. The hijackers pulled out their pistols and threatened everyone not to move. Chaos reigns in the cabin. The hijackers have taken control of the passengers and confiscated all communication devices. Fortunately, with the cockpit door closed, the captain and co-pilot were not threatened. However, at the word of the pirate leader, the captain opened the cockpit door. The assailant stands in front of the cockpit door with a pistol. The captain tries to open the door. The co-pilot tries to dissuade the captain who hits her on the head with a glass of water. It turns out that the hijacker's hostage is the captain's wife. He had to protect his family. The hijackers finally succeeded in hijacking the plane, but they didn't know there was a negotiator among the passengers. Everyone was too scared to move, but he approached the hijackers. He handed over his cell phone, which confused the hijackers. Sam spoke his mind and helped the hijackers analyze the situation. Most people are too afraid of guns to resist, but a small group of people won't listen. If there's chaos on the plane, there could be casualties. But he doesn't care about these people, he just wants to get home safely. So Sam wanted to help the hijackers control the hostages and maintain order on the plane. But suddenly, a riot broke out in the cabin. One of the passengers tried to seize the gun held by the hijackers and was quickly overpowered by them, but the gun rolled to Sam's feet. Sam didn't hesitate to pick up the gun, then handed it back to the hijackers. The leader of the hijackers asked Sam to be his assistant. Sam's first suggestion was to get the captain out of his seat. Since the plane was equipped with an autopilot, the captain only had to control takeoff and landing. But the captain, sitting in the pilot's seat, will control the plane to change its direction. The hijackers took the captain straight to his first class seat, but this was only the first step in Sam's real plan. It turned out that the plane from Dubai was equipped with a pirate negotiation game. The plane's passengers could play and type to communicate with each other. Sam took the remote control and invited the captain of seat one to join in the game. Sam was able to get in touch with the captain, but he received bad news. The plane was about to enter a rocky airspace. If ground control didn't receive a response from the cockpit, it would contact the Iraqi army to shoot down the plane. There were 200 passengers on board, but no one was in the cockpit. All the passengers were taken hostage. When the plane entered Iraqi airspace, the ground command post initiated identification. Just as the ground console was about to contact the military, an injured woman put on an earpiece. We tried five times to identify her. I'm speaking to the captain. The man asked her if she was the captain. The hijackers forced the woman to admit she was the captain, but command discovered from the photos that the captain was a man. The hijacker asked the captain to pick up the phone, but he would not. Sam then thought of a way to threaten the captain with his wife. The captain had no choice but to answer the phone. The ground console was relieved to hear the captain's voice and asked a few safety questions. The captain answered all questions correctly and avoided conflict. The hijackers escorted the captain back to his seat. Although the crisis was over, a woman at the ground console sensed that something was wrong. The plane had issued a danger signal after takeoff, but then declared it a misunderstanding. The team leader wanted to know what the problem was. The woman says that another passenger on the plane also sent a text message to the counterterrorism unit, but that passenger didn't keep sending messages. If it was all fixed, why didn't the second caller send any more messages? Well, because for some reason the Wi-Fi was down. Realized that something was wrong, only the cockpit could control the Wi-Fi but the captain had no reason to disable it. They checked the plane's trajectory, found nothing wrong and decided they were overthinking things. The woman asks for a zoom. They see that the plane's destination is correct, but that the trajectory is off by three degrees. That's the plane trying to tell you something. Everyone starts to think about the message the plane is sending. It's the airline's code word for when a plane is three degrees off course. It's a signal to the ground. It's a signal to the ground that the plane is under threat. 
but the people on board can't communicate it verbally. They knew the plane was threatened and that someone was calling for help. It so something has happened to Kingdom 2-9, and someone is calling for help. This was the captain's plan as he didn't want to go into the cockpit to let the hijackers guard down. After answering safety questions, the captain quietly turned the cockpit knob. He altered the plane's trajectory by three degrees and sent a message to the ground about the kidnapping.